Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers National Cyclone video update today the 18th of December 2014. My name's Chris Nitzo and this update is sponsored by our major sponsor this year, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Well, as you might have guessed, there's no current tropical cyclones around the country and the only area of interest is this area up near Indonesia and the WA bomb are all over it and they have talked about this occurring uh, east, sorry, west of 105 degrees east and near or north of 10 degrees south. Now we have a fairly good agreement on model guidance of a tropical low developing in this area and fairly good agreement, also tight agreement in fact, of the system pushing away to the west rather than to the east. So not going to affect WA mainland but it might affect some of the islands out there being Christmas and possibly Cocos. Furthermore, and we'll talk a bit more about this in the subscriber updates, but furthermore, later on in the year and very early into next year, we're expecting that monsoon trough to push eastwards, uh, and so we will expect to see an increase of thunderstorm activity and possibly a tropical low off the North Kimberley coastline in and around about that New Year period. And following on from that, we have another area of interest in the Gulf of Carpentaria. But we'll talk more about all that in the various state updates for our subscribers. But for now, uh, the only area that is of interest locally is this area west of 105 degrees and north at around 10 south. One thing that we can see in this Indian Ocean Basin is that there is a lot of convective activity going on. So there's actually possibly a tropical low in that area. There's another one possibly located there, there. And the area that we're looking at is around here. Uh, that could be uh, developing into a tropical low shortly. So, folks, there's a lot of convection in this area, and that will coincide with an active MJO pulse in the region. Now, the problem is that the computer models are disagreeing on where that MJO is going to pop its little ugly head, and one of them, the European Ensemble, is showing it popping its head right over the top of Australia. And so what we have is a situation that as we head towards very late December, we have an increase in convective activity across northern Australia, particularly the southeast Timor, sorry, the Timor Sea, southeast Indian Ocean, and the Gulf of Carpentaria. And so the Euro develops two tropical lows, one off the Kimberley coastline and one in the Gulf of Carpentaria as we head towards uh, very late in December and into early January. Eventually, the Euro in the longer term also develops a tropical low in the Coral Sea. Now, if we compare that to the forecast by the GFS forecast model suit, you can see here the GFS pops a little bit of a weaker signal of the MJO into the Indian Ocean and just keeps it there. It just sort of sits there and sits there and sits there all the way through to the end of December. So there is a lot of disagreement between the guidance as to where that MJO is going to pop up and to a lesser extent how it's going to progress once it does pop up. Nevertheless, the American model suits are are interested in possibly three different areas and there's this one here uh, well off the Pilbara or Kimberley coastline there's this one here to the west of Darwin and there's also one out here in the South Pacific now this is the computer model from the CMC ensemble now remembering of course that last season when we did our model wars the CMC ensemble actually came out on top in a lot of areas uh, believe it or not so normally this is one of our least least reliable models uh, however the last season it actually performed quite well the gfs model is a little bit more intent in the coral sea of developing something as we head into early january uh, i honestly can't see this happening but it is there on the model and we do need to address it and in the european ensemble we see a little bit of lower pressure developing right along that uh, kimberley coastline and into inland northern territory now, the system that will develop or could develop in this area will push in a westerly direction initially uh, and drift offshore. There's a lot of wills and coulds, though. Sorry, there's a lot of shoulds and coulds. As for the current pattern, we've seen a lot of convective activity across Queensland. Some really good falls once again over the southern inland parts of Queensland. We've had 30, 31 millimetres here. We've also got uh, falls getting onto the coastline as well. Some of these storms, particularly in the southern part of Queensland, getting to the uh, the coast. The northern inland storms are, he are remaining inland. The upper level winds are not strong enough to push them to the uh, coastline. Over the west, the Northern Territory is having a bit of a storm break. There's a lot of dry air in that area. And over the Kimberley, we're seeing some very active thunderstorm activity, uh, but once again missing the most more populated areas of the state. Uh, and all this is clutter here. 
on the Pilbara radar, so that's not actually heavy rain, it's just all clutter. The radar, of course, and the uh, lightning tracker is courtesy of weatherzone.com.au for your weather graphics. Tomorrow, folks, tomorrow we're going to continue to see thunderstorms across the Kimberley region heading southwards into the interior parts of WA. So we're seeing a lot of moisture pushing into this region. The Northern Territory, most of the storms will be in the central parts of the Territory. And across Queensland, we're going to see a continuation of that line of showers and storms again. Maybe getting a little bit closer to the coast here along the central Queensland coast tomorrow. And the bulk of the activity tomorrow will be in the northern inland parts of Queensland. As we head to Friday, big increase in thunderstorms is the order of the day here. Sorry, not Friday. As we head into Saturday, a big increase in thunderstorms is the order of the day here across the northwestern parts of the continent. A lot of moisture seeping straight into the gold fields as well of WA, which is quite interesting this time of year. Not much moisture usually penetrates here unless it's from a cyclone. But uh, we see some very heavy falls of rain possible across the uh, interior or the eastern parts of the Kimberley here with that increase in storm activity. Across northern inland Queensland, once again in the Gulf Country, looking at a fairly enhanced shower and storm activity in that area, and possibly some of that activity hitting the coastline, but the activity will be more isolated along, around Queensland on Saturday than it will be tomorrow. Sunday, Sunday, we're continuing to see showers and storms across the Kimberley. Showers and storms really are firing up here along the Northern Territory or in the Northern Territory. Isolated activity remaining around Queensland. However, things do stabilise in the upper levels around Queensland on the Sunday. So expect any activity that does occur to be quite isolated. Monday, no prizes for guessing where the bulk of the storm activity is going to be lying. Right in this region here. So Northern Territory, Eastern WA is going to see a continuation of enhanced shower and storm activity here uh, along a, a persistent trough line. Some pretty awesome uh, accumulated falls here for, for the next four days. Uh, falls of 50 to 100, possibly even more millimetres across eastern parts of WA and across western parts of the Northern Territory heading into the central parts of the Territory. Some really good shower and storm activity. Also, parts of inland Queensland will have seen falls of 25 millimetres or more over the next four days. Then the four days after that, folks, we're starting to get closer and closer to the monsoon. But it's not here yet, but we are starting to see an enhancement of uh, the moisture levels coming into the uh, coming into the region. So from the north, we're seeing a lot more moisture coming in and uh, pushing into these trough systems. So we're seeing a lot more storm activity, a lot more general rain activity from those uh, from those trough systems. So we're going to see a lot of thunderstorm activity across the territory, western parts of Queensland, in with a good shot of some really decent rainfall as well from a trough system uh, in that four to eight day period. So from the 22nd to Christmas Day, once again the central coast and the po possibly most of the northern coast missing out. There will be some isolated storms from the tablelands pushing eastward. So, And once again, the Kimberley looking at a fairly active storm period in that four to, four to eight day period. And once, if we look at the accumulated falls, you can really start to see the build up taking full shape now. And it shouldn't be long, uh, touch wood, before we see some sort of monsoonal activity. But over the next eight days, we're certainly going to see a big increase in the amount of moisture availability here for thunderstorms to a, develop, and B, dump some heavy falls of rain across the next eight days. Thanks for taking a look. And just remember, if you want to be a subscriber, please head to ozcyclonechasers.com.au. And by becoming a subscriber, you can help us get into more cyclones and document them better. Thanks for watching this video. We'll have another update on Monday night, the 22nd of December. Have a great weekend.